Hello, it's Doug from Behind Closed Doors and today I'm going to be having a gander at Rolo Tomasi. So let's get into the shorts. This first one is called Men Can Never Be Victims. Yep, I agree with it already. Men can never be victims because the moment you start complaining, like men can never complain because real men never complain. So if you go and you say, well, you know, men got it rough because... You know, women today only want the top 1%. I'm not that guy. You know, guys are going to, you know, guys and women are going to say, suck it up, suck it up and, and be better. And, and, you know, don't wish you were, don't wish you were easier, wish you were better. Guys get that all the time. But yet they get that message and then they get the message of it's okay to cry. No, this globalized sexual marketplace is going to be a huge problem. I mean, it is already, but it's only going to get worse and bigger. It's okay to get in touch with your emotions. So yeah, guys are like, like, you know, reasonably confused. Like, well, I'm supposed to be in touch with my emotions. I'm supposed to be meet her needs. I'm so oh yeah, just the ones that are appropriate. Don't get in touch with anger because that probably won't end very well or jealousy or neediness or anything that's uh, unhelpful. To cry on demand, but I'm also supposed to suck it up and never be a victim and never have to complain about anything or never have to worry or never, never express that maybe I'm worried about my job or my family, or my dog or whatever the hell it's on, you know, pressing on your mind. You're not supposed to do that because then it makes you sound like a victim. There is a certain degree of loneliness that men experience that women don't have to contend with. Women have to contend with a different type of loneliness. Yeah. So in terms of bitching and whining and complaining, you can't be victim in that sense. And also just legally, it's very difficult to be a victim of domestic violence, for example. So this one's called Strong Independent Woman. Basically, that's another uh, prime directive of feminism. We don't need no men. Okay. Well, we yeah, this whole we don't need no men things. I've covered this in another video that I've done. And um, I go into all the reasons as to why you need men for survival. We all need men for survival. Anything that is related to your survival in the world, you need a man for. The only reason why you personally don't need a man is because of the sexual revolution and the fact that there's a society of men doing the work for you. We make our own money. We, what they're saying is we are independent women. She, I would say she would probably agree with me if I said this. Yeah, this whole independent woman thing is a load of bullshit, really, because nobody's independent. We're all dependent on somebody else. We're interdependent. And uh, we, we require all sorts of competent people that are good at their jobs just to be alive, just to get water, just to get electricity, just to function in the world, to stay alive and keep the elements away from us. So um, no one truly is independent. It's a myth. Tommy? You're an independent woman. You're a strong, independent woman. Tommy, that might be in reference to um, Tori Lo Tommy Lauren. I did a video on her as well. Um, yeah, she came out. She was having a right old complaint. Strong, independent woman. Yes. Yes, I am. Okay. Independent of what? Independent of men. Independent of men's provisioning. Independent. That's so sad. And... Um... I don't think people realize that this arrogant lie cliche of feminism is such a destructive ideological belief in people's brains that's been programmed basically by hypnosis into younger women. And um, it's really bad for them. It's really bad for men. And it's really bad for children. Like, children need a mother and a father independent of a need of men well what were men, women you know ha historically like evolutionarily what were women dependent on men for protection provisioning child you know parental investment maybe emotional investment you know for for all of human history we worked together diligently in order to cooperate and until 1960 now we're at war with each other it's ridiculous it's um it, it, feminism is Marxism. That's all it is. It's just pitting two people against each other. One's the oppressed, one's the oppressor. Feminism was designed to break up the family and tax the housewife. That's what it was designed to do. And take, uh, make sure that the state had control of the children. It's got nothing to do with equality. Yeah, again, having a baby is a really potentially dangerous thing to do you know the woman can child the mother can die in childbirth and so can the baby and you know without hospitals without good doctors without our understanding of medicine a lot of babies wouldn't have survived and didn't survive for many years 
and because of the advancements in technology and our understanding of science, uh, things improve now. And it's a shame that feminism wasn't a construct that was built on healthy ideas of gratitude. Instead of fostering, and what feminism has done is it's foster an evil entity to possess women so that they don't, so that they're not grateful for anything that's in their lives. And all they do is end up whining, bitching, moaning, and complaining. And the men too. I don't need no man. Okay, so you're saying you don't need all those things. Okay, great. What's left? What else should I value about you? If, you, if that's already taken care of, if the beta buck side of hypergamy is already taken care of, what's left? Alpha fucks. That's what's left. Yeah, and there needs to be a kind of symbiotic union. And this video is called, What's a Woman's Worth? You've got to have this and 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 this. And if you don't have it, you're not the perfect guy. In fact, there's a poster of the the perfect man. And of course, it's this guy with his shirt off. and He's got you know ripped abs and everything. It says the perfect man is and it's all this list of crazy and brings me ice cream in bed at the bottom of the thing. Right. And it's this it's like there's such a a laundry list of qualifications that the guy has to have woman hot available. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Those are the two things. And you know what? You can't even understand that. Yep. You can't e- and you still with all of this bullet point checklist, you still don't want to give that up. Yep. You still because think about this, all of those all of those qualities, mm-hmm. what women are eff- effectively saying is my pussy and my body and my sexuality and my agency is worth all of the, these 436 bullet point checklists. Yeah. yeah, it's this unhealthy entitlement to having everything all in one instead of just realizing that somebody else is a human being. That's an even balance. Yeah. That's how magical my pussy is. Yeah, I think that laundry list is only applicable when they're looking for a provider. When they're looking for a lover, it's a completely different story. So you've got to look at what people do instead of what they say a lot of the time because they'll tell you what they would ideally like but they won't tell you what they're actually settling for. This one's called women can have anyone they want. Well, I don't think that's true because they can't have me. I'm sure I'm not the only guy out there with the standards. So a lot of guys, particularly in the black pill community or the big tail community or whatever, want to say, well, women I don't know what the black pill community is. I've heard of the red pill, but I'll need to have a look at the black pill. Like a woman like her, she can just spread her legs and she can have any girl, any guy she wants. Yeah, that is true. But here we have an example of a woman who, by by their by that definition, could certainly do that. But she's not. She's venting her frustration on TikTok or on a one minute video because those guys she doesn't want those guys. She doesn't want that attention. She doesn't want those particular. Like she can have anybody, but she doesn't want just anybody because women's mating strategies and women's sexual imperatives and their mating imperatives are different than men's. So when you think like that, you're thinking like a guy and you're projecting that that ideal onto women. Stop doing that. Yeah, just because you can have anything you want doesn't mean to say you do want everything that you could get. So like when I go in Tesco's, I can pretty much buy anything in the store, food-wise, or you know, Walmart or whatever you have over there, like grocery store shopping. You can pretty much buy anything you want, but it doesn't mean to say that you want everything you become very particular, especially if there's a lot of competition. Oh, I'm going to buy these grapes. Oh, what about these grapes over here? These are red. These are green. These are a pound less. These are, uh, these are organic, you know, kind of thing. So the more kind of like choice there is, the more competition there is, the more difficult it is to make a decision. And also when you do make that decision, it's very difficult to be satisfied with it because you're always thinking, well, what if I'd have chose something else? So yeah, there was um, four videos there from Rolo Tomasi. Very interesting, very intriguing.